All right, so in this episode, I'm going to talk about a housing market, okay? Well, how is this different than the house allocation problem? Well, this is a market where each individual is endowed with a house, all right? Uh, remember, in the house allocation problem, everybody is kind of a new tenant, nobody has a house, and so individuals are going to be assigned a house for the very first time. Here, this is a market environment. Uh, there are a bunch of individuals, they already have houses, but the thing is, some of them may want to switch, trade, and so, you know, I, I live in a house, but you know what, it is too far from my uh, workplace, and would you like to uh, trade with me? So I sell my house uh, to you, and then uh, that basically means you sell your house to me. Well, but we are looking at basic exchange economy, there's going to be no price, so it's basically a barter exchange. So we did this in sort of in advanced in, uh, uh, my microeconomic theory, uh, it's a very similar framework in that sense. So all the concepts are going to be familiar. We already learned those concepts, but we're just going to apply them to this very specific framework. Um, all right, so a housing market is a quadruple, all right? There are four main ingredients. Whenever I tell you housing market, you should consider, think of those four main ingredients. The first one is I, the set of agents, set of individuals, finite. Age, set of houses, again, finite. For simplicity, once again, we're going to assume that the number of individuals, agents, and the number of houses are the same. And as I said, they're finite. Well, second, the preferences. Preference, orderings, a complete transitive, and antisymmetric, meaning strict preference orderings over houses. So each individual has a preference relation over the houses and initial endowment, which I'm going to denote by E. Uh, well, it's basically, uh, you know, who owns uh, which house, all right? So E is a matching, in fact, which maps each individual to a house, all right? It's, again, one-to-one -one and on to. And again, it basically tells us who owns which house, all right? I'm going to denote this notation H sub I, uh, which is E of I. Uh, it denotes the initial endowment, initial house of agent I, okay? So throughout uh, the rest of the notation, whenever you see HI, it is nothing but uh, player I's or the agent I's uh, initial house, okay? So HI is one of those houses, don't forget that, all right? Well, a matching in this framework, uh, remember the agents are going to make a trade, all right? And then, well, I mean, in a decentralized market, we just let them trade and then see what outcome they're going to get. Remember, this is what we did in uh, advanced micro theory, and we looked at the core allocations and proto efficient allocations. This is kind of the same thing we're going to do. But the thing is, uh, how we are going to uh, denote the final outcome once the agents make a trade, well, we're going to call it a matching. All right, so matching mu uh, match matches each agent to a house and only one house, so it's a one-to-one -one and onto function. We call it individually rational if uh, each individual is receiving, you know, once they do the trade, each individual is receiving a house mu i, which is uh, at least as good as his initial house, all right? So that's true for every, again, a matching. So they do a trade and the trade outcome is gonna be a matching, a new matching, probably different than E, probably, maybe the same. But whatever it is, we call the matching individual irrational if it basically gives everybody at least as good as, at least a house as good as his initial or her initial house, okay? Well, the second important concept we're going to talk about is core. Once again, we already defined that notion, uh, but specifically in this framework, this is how we define core. So a matching mu is in the core of the housing market if there exists no coalition T, which is a subset of non-empty subset of I, 
and another matching V such that those three properties hold. What are those? The first one basically says the following. So all those agents in the coalition, the subcoalition T, uh, their new matching is first of all is 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 in this set H I H I I from T. Okay? So every individual, every agent in the sub-coalition T, his new matching is in this set. What does that say? Well, that says the following. Remember the, the idea of core? It basically is the following. A subset of players leave the rest of the players, form a new coalition, and they trade among themselves and get better off. If, if this is not possible, well, then we say the final allocation here, it is the uh, matching, is in the core, remember? So here, what does that mean that this, this group of people, T, leaves the matching and then they, they, they rematch, uh, you know, they, they reform uh, or they re retrade and come up with completely different uh, match. So we denote this completely different match as VI. All right. Well, the thing is, if this T individual, I mean, the group of individuals in T, if they leave the uh, group, well, then the houses they are going to trade among themselves are in this set. So therefore, this new matching VI should be VI should be in this set. Okay, that's the idea. I mean, if for example, player one or individual one is not in my coalition, in, in, in our coalition, well, I cannot get his house. That's, that's the idea, all right? Uh, we're not bullies. We can't get a house of someone who is not in our coalition. We can get house of, the, of one of the persons in our coalition only. All right, the second and the third is basically says it's improving or predominating for those individuals in this uh, sub-coalition T, okay? I keep calling it sub-coalition, but it's a coalition, okay? So I, I mean the same thing, sub-coalition or coalition. So here, the second basically says under this new matching VI, each individual actually things vi is at least as good as the uh, uh, the matching mu i and at least one right so some of the agents in this group t actually prefers uh, vi over mu i all right so that's the idea uh, so let's give a numerical example here i don't know if i need uh, too many agents, but let's suppose I have four agents, all right, so this is I, and then the set of houses is H1, H2, H3, H4, and for simplicity, let's assume that HI is equal to uh, E of EI. Um, well, you see what I mean? I mean, initially, this is what I mean. Player one or individual one owns house one, individual two owns house two, individual three owns house three, etc., etc. Okay? Um, so if this notation is confusing you, I'm sorry. What I meant is uh, this is how they initially own those houses. Well, however, let's suppose they have uh, different preferences. Okay? Uh, four. For example, individual one prefers house three over house one and then house two and then house four. Individual two uh, thinks that house two is in fact his, 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 his best house. Then house one, three and four. Individual three thinks house one and then house three, house two, house four. And individual four thinks house two, house one, house three and house four. Okay, let's suppose. So uh, this is one uh, a housing market, okay? I specified individuals, I specified houses, I specified the preferences, and then I specified the initial endowments. So this is a housing market. All right, well, now I'm gonna consider one uh, matching, okay? Just one arbitrarily picked matching. So let's say, uh, well, let's say the matching this. 
uh, the first individual gets uh, his house, the second individual gets his house, and then the third individual gets house uh, four, and then the fourth individual gets house three. Okay, so this is one potential matching. So the question is, can I say, for example, this matching is individually rational? Can I say that? Okay, well, player one is getting house one, all right? Well, remember, he already owned house one. So basically, uh, his new matching is exactly the same as his initial endowment. So it is individually rational for individual one and also for individual two. Well, here, individual three, his initial house was house three. But now he is getting house four, which is much worse. Well, much. Uh, it's worse than his initial endowment. So what does that mean? That means under this new assignment uh, matching, uh, we assign, we match individual three uh, house, which is worse than his initial house. Well, this is, in, this is not individually rational. I mean, he wouldn't really trade this way, right? He would just reject this trade. So this is not individually rational. Not individually rational because of uh, player three. Well, what about player four or individual four? We don't really need to check because it is... I mean, this doesn't hold for one eye. It is enough to conclude that this matching is not individually rational. Okay, so you don't need to check individual four. Well, what about core? All right, let's, I mean, core and individual rationality are, 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 are related, but they're not really the uh, same thing. So let's check if this is in the core, all right? Well, first off, is there any coalition T uh, which satisfy this. All right, well, here, this coalition, I mean, a coalition, a group of uh, individuals who actually would like to deviate from this. Well, this is clearly not individual one, right? Uh, because, well, I mean, I, I shouldn't say clearly. This is clearly not individual two because uh, she is getting her best house anyway. So she has no incentive to deviate. Maybe individual one, maybe he may want to deviate because he actually prefers H3 over H1. And you know what? Individual three prefers H1 over H3. Ah, oh, so you know what? Let's consider this uh, T I1 and I3. Okay? So individual one and three deviates. And then a new matching. VI1 is equal to H3, and then VI3 is equal to H1. What does that mean? That means individual one gets, uh, let me erase this. So individual one, so V is this matching. Individual one gets house three. Individual two, well, remember, uh, they don't care about what happens to the other guys. So they don't touch to their allocations or matches, uh, matchings. Uh, so individual three, however, gets house one. And then finally individual four, uh, is not a part of a coalition. So we leave them as is. So this is the new uh, matching. But the thing is, don't forget the deviating players are individual one and individual three. And so we will be comparing are they getting better off in comparison to mu, obviously? Well, the first thing first, under the new matching, uh, each individual, player one and individual one and individual, or agent one and agent three, they are clearly getting uh, their houses from this set. Remember, HI1, HI3. And this is nothing but H1, this is nothing but H3. Right? So the first part is check. The second part, VI is at least as good as mu I for every individual. And there are some individuals, VI gives them strictly better outcome. Well, in fact, for both agent one, right? Uh, under mu, this is mu, 
for individual one, and this is V. So V is giving player one, agent one, strictly better outcome. Well, for player three, remember, H3 is, oh, uh, individual three is getting H4. So this is uh, mu and uh, individual one is now, uh, uh, three, I'm sorry, getting H1 now. So this is V. So this is, well, this is a terrible notation. I'm sorry, this is mu, this is V. So individual three gets definitely better uh, outcome. So as you see, once agent one and three deviate under this new matching, they are actually going to get a better off. Well, what about the other two players? Well, remember, they're not part of deviation. And so players, uh, agents one and three, they don't really care about how well they're getting at, uh, but their situation hasn't been changed anyhow. So uh, that's it. That's basically uh, says we can actually find a coalition and this coalition members are going to get better payoff in a sense because they're going to get a better matching a better houses and so therefore this matching mu is not in the core because there is a coalition who prefer to deviate okay that's the idea so here don't forget one thing i mean maybe there are many things but here the mu assigns h4 to uh, agent 3 uh, but when they deviate don't forget i mean they do not own h4 i mean agent 3 doesn't own house 4 agent 3 owns uh, house 3 agent 1 owns house 1 and so if they deviate and sort of separate themselves from the uh, uh from the uh, how should i say uh, uh, the, the, the rest of the group, well, then they are going to trade among themselves. Huh. So here you maybe probably uh, noticed that uh, from the very beginning is like in this new matching V. Uh, I mean, this is not really a matching. Why is that so? Because one of those houses, house three, has been matched to two agents. Huh. So very good well don't forget this definition doesn't say anything about how this v is going to be matching the other agents uh, outside of this t so therefore when i put it here like this I, I did it on purpose because i wanted to underline this fact later so what agent four is gonna get i mean which house he's gonna get is actually uh, not a problem of this V, okay? Because again, agent two and four are not uh, are not included in the deviating coalition T. So, right? So here, uh, let's ignore this as well. The thing is, though, I two is going to. I mean, agent two and four has only two available uh, options, right? House two and house four. So you can define V as H2, H4, right? Or H4, H2. But again, who cares? What we really need is whether agent one and three are getting better off under V in comparison to mu. How the uh, other agents are gonna get or what houses they're gonna get is not the problem of V. Okay, so that's, that's, and so maybe agents two and four are gonna get worse off in this new matching or maybe better off as well, but doesn't matter because the core, the definition of core only looks at the agents within this sub-coalition T. All right, so that's a very important point I wanted to underline. I hope that did not cause a further confusion. Okay, I hope that was clear.